Hello, it's Ashley with At Home with Ashley, and I just finished the most epic build, and I'm so excited to tell you about it. This is for my sister's house. She has this big living room with vaulted ceilings, and she has been wanting a library in it. So I built it with my husband, and it's all made from IKEA bookcases. So let me show you how we built it. Okay, I'm gonna show you the before video of my sister's living room so you can kind of see the tall ceilings we were working with. The very first thing we did was we went over there and we measured and came up with a plan. The width of the room is 153 inches. We filled that as much with bookcases as we could, but we also made sure to do supports on the side. And then we talked to my sister and brother-in-law about how high they wanted to go. And um, there is some space left over when we're finished that I'll show you. And some people are bothered by that, but we went as high as they wanted to go. And honestly, I'm happy we didn't go higher because it is so hot working up that high. We were 12 feet up on a ladder and it's like kind of scary. We were working in August, so it was hot and sweaty, but also like much higher. I would have like not felt super safe about it. And we bought our library ladder from Home Depot. It shipped in like four days. It was super fast. It's not a custom item. And so it was um, it was about $800 for the library ladder. And if you would have had to do it custom, it'd be so much more money, taking so much more time. And the height we did was the perfect height for that ladder. So all of those reasons are why we did the height we did. Um, and then we just figured out how many bookcases we could fit in. And then I made a mock-up and I sent it over to her just so she could kind of see like, do I like this? And it was just good to kind of get a visual. This is what we're working towards. First up, build one of the bookcases for the bottom section of the bookcase. That way you'll have the correct depth for building the base. Just follow the included instructions from, from IKEA for putting the Billy bookcase together. The main supplies we used for this project are Billy bookcases. So we used four of the 31.5 inch wide by 79 and a half inch tall. Those went on the bottom and then there was a skinny one we used, same height, 79 and a half inch tall but then it was the 15.75 inch wide so that made up the bottom and then on the top we went much shorter and we did a 41.5 inch height and we did four in the same widths as the bottom so 31 and a half for the wider ones and then a skinnier one in the middle my sis my sister specifically asked for as many much space for books as possible um you could definitely have taken out the middle one and put more filler space but this is what we did because she's a teacher, she loves reading, and she wanted as many books as possible. Next, remove baseboards on the three walls where the bookcase will be and the two adjoining walls. Set those aside until you add the trim a little bit later on. So if needed, you're gonna remove the carpet from where the baseboard will go. Pull back the carpet, remove the tack strip, pull out any staples in the floor and cut out the carpet pad. That way the base will be built directly onto the subfloor. So now that the prep is done, you're gonna cut two by six boards the length of the room. Our room is 153 inches wide. So we cut the length of pieces for the front and back and eight inch long pieces for cross supports. Um, and this is all for the base and we're gonna use screws to secure the base into the wall at the stud. So you wanna use a stud finder for this. Again, we want this as secure as possible because it's gonna be a lot of weight of books. Place the supports between the front and back piece of the base and secure them both into the pieces of wood with screws. And the last and really crucial step of creating the base of the um, library is to make sure it's that level. Since we're working in a newer home, the floor was pretty level, straight. Um, where it wasn't, we needed to add shims. Um, so we just put them in until our level said it was level, and then we used a multi-tool to cut off the excess. Next, we're gonna build the side support. So we're gonna cut four pieces of two by six, the same height as lower board, bookcases which is 79 and a half inches and screw those into the wall cut 16 pieces of two by six that are eight inches long for bracing the side supports eight for each side screw in five between the front and back piece of the side supports and then three of the eight inch bracing on the other side of the supports this is what the bookcases will connect to put one at the top middle and bottom of the side supports and now we're going to start putting some of the bookcases onto the base so we can figure out our electrical issues so there's two outlets that are going to be covered up by the bookcase um, one on the side and that needed to be extended pretty far to still work through the side support and so we used a gang metal box cover with a cable clamp and we routed the wires to new electrical outlet box so the new outlet would work and then we used a jigsaw to cut a hole in the backing and then just make sure you turn off the electricity or hire an electrician if this is too in-depth for you 
um, and then you wire it back into the outlet and replace the outlet cover. We had one outlet on the back wall and all that we need to do is add spacers into the back of the outlet and cut a hole into the back of the bookcase with the jigsaw and then we use longer screws to connect it to the box. Screw the side bookcases into the lumber supports, screw the middle bookcases into the bookcase next to it. We did two screws under the top and middle shelf and one in the base to secure them. Cut two pieces of 2 by 8 inch boards to the length of the room. Screw the top support piece into the studs in the back wall. Use anti-tip hardware from the Billy bookcases to attach the top of the bookshelves to the back top piece of lumber. The bottom bookcases will be very sturdy now. And next you're going to cut some pieces, 8 inch pieces, for the supports and you're going to screw them in um, to brace that top support piece. If needed, add shims to the middle bookcase. Ours had an extra fourth inch on each side. The shims help it so it sits evenly in the center. Hammer them in until they sit flush with the front of the bookcase. Next, we're going to build the upper side supports, and this is going to be just like building the lower supports, except for it's going to be the height, 41 and 3 fourths, as those top bookcases. Then we're going to bring the bookcases up, which is very exciting, but also kind of scary up these tall ladders. So at the very top, we add, added more supports. This were made with two by fours. It probably wasn't necessary, but it did make it more secure. And we also added more of those anti-tip kits just so the top bookcases are totally in. Put the excess carpet by using a straight edge and a sharp razor, nail in the tack strip, and then push the carpet back down to cover up that old tack strip. And then after that, it was time to move to trim. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is to reinstall those baseboards. The side pieces of baseboard need to be cut shorter and then they can be nailed back into place. And this is already going to make it look so much more finished. Um, to accommodate the height of our base, we needed another baseboard on top of the original baseboard. Um, but one problem was, is when we put that trim on, there's a big gap between the baseboards and the bookcase because of the design of the Billy bookcase. So we cut a piece of trim that was super skinny and put it in the gap and nailed that into place. And then we just need a little caulk to finish it. You could finish it with a bunch of caulk, but I don't think it'd look as nice. Um, and then we kept going with the trim. So we put more up on the middle ladder support. We use four pieces. It's a really big area that's going to be supporting that ladder. And so um, all of those sections we put together, we needed to use some shims because the top of the wall kind of comes out and push those bookcases out a little. So the shims just kind of make it all look nice and flat. And then once the horizontal center trim was up, we nailed in the trim that went over the lower bookcase seams and we installed the side trim on the lower edges too. Um, when two Ikea bookcases hit each other, you see the seam and it just doesn't look really nice. So this trim is a great finishing touch. Um, so now we did um, the crown molding up top and it's really easy to cut because it's just straight cuts on the end and we nailed it into the bookcase. Last we installed the trim that goes on the seams of the higher bookcases. While my husband put up the trim, I caulked and filled holes with wood filler. Another nice detail we did is we put stickers over the hardware and holes on the top of the bookcases. Um, these shorter bookcases, Ikea puts holes in hardware on the inside below the top shelf because they usually would be on the ground so you wouldn't see them, but when they're upside um, up high, you really see them. They're super obvious. And then we also sanded any uneven trim so it's all flat. Our middle section especially needed sanding because of that um, shimming work we had to do. And then I used wood filler to fill all nail holes and I did two layers of that and then caulk on all the seams and once that's done I painted all of the trim I did that a few times um, and then I just used the same color as the baseboards it doesn't exactly match the Ikea bookcases um, but I preferred it to match the trim and when the books are in you don't notice anyway so for the very last thing we did it was to finish the library ladder and so I stained that I did like a dark brown to match the rest of the wood in my sister's house and I used the color ebony if you're wanting to do that. Um, I brushed on the stain and then I just used a rag to remove the excess. And once that was dry, we waited two days. We put together the ladder and added the hardware, the wheels and the hooks. And then we mounted the rail to the bookcase. And this was so exciting because it was finally looking finished. And we put the library ladder on and it looked so good. The last thing we did was we put all the shelves in place. I wanted all the sh shelves the same level so that I would like really enjoy that. And then we added in the books. I did color coordinated because that's how my sister asked me. Some series are together, but mostly we did um, rainbow order, which looks so pretty. I 
I'm going to have everything linked on my blog in case you want to know the exact trim, the exact wood, a cut list um, for the lumber I use. But I thought I could talk about costs on here. So all 10 of the Billy bookcases, which were in stock at my store, that was $650 to buy all the bookcases, which is so much cheaper than buying the wood for it. And it's much faster because everything's pre-drilled, ready to go. So we bought that $650. And then with the lumber, the trim, the screws, paint, all of that, the total came to $2,200 with the bookcases. So that's the cost. Um, my sister and brother-in-law, they got some quotes on this and professionals were tailing them about $9,000 to have it built. So if you don't pay for labor and just the cost, it saves a lot of money versus having someone build it for you.